everybody, I'm sure you've heard the news by now that Donald Trump uh, has been indicted uh, by New York City, uh, by Alvin Bragg. He was indicted in Manhattan for his role in pay play paying hush money to a porn star, according to five people with knowledge of the matter. Uh, it's a very historic day. It's the first time a president has faced this uh, kind of criminal indictment. Mary Trump is here, and Mary, I, Mary, we've got to say, you've written uh, a book, Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. That was published in January 2022, and then you wrote a second book. Yeah, actually, the first book was July 21, no, 2020, like forever ago. The second book came out in August of uh, 2021. Well, I'm happy. Happy to, to have you here, Mary, to talk about this. This is a very historic day. Um, and, and of course, you're one of the first people I thought about. I said, I wonder what Mary Trump thinks about this development. So we'll get it straight from you, Mary. What was your reaction when you heard the news? Enormous relief, um, especially after the fiasco of the last couple of weeks and the way in which Donald was once again able to manipulate everybody into his chosen narrative um, and kind of get everybody's hopes up and, and dash everybody's expectations. And then we heard, of course, today that the grand jury was on a three or four week hiatus. So we thought another month would pass. And listen, I think it's understandable that people are feeling impatient, and maybe even demoralized. But the truth of the matter is, nobody from the New York DA's office was saying anything. So this was all manufactured by Donald. I feel that this is extraordinarily important, even though these may not be the most serious charges he faces. It's extraordinarily important for the rule of law, for accountability. And I think anybody who has been a victim of Donald Trump should feel vindicated tonight. Um, why do you think he was, I'm gonna turn off the commenting because it covers your face. And if anyone asks, has a question for Mary, please feel free to put it in the question section of this. Um, it, it's interesting because he was certainly making a lot of noise about this and some were speculating it was to raise money for his presidential campaign. Why do you think he was so verbal and, and asking for people to protest. I believe that was on, was that a week ago Sunday when he first put that on True Social? I think it was, uh, uh, yeah, a week and a half ago. Um, as you can imagine, my phone is kind of going crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was almost two weeks ago. Donald is, is, is very good at preempting the conversation, crafting the narrative, and he also understands that I mean, this, this may not be real to him because, again, he's never been held accountable for anything. But, uh, you know, I'm sure he had some inkling, inkling that, that charges may indeed be coming. And he knows he's got um, Ron DeSantis on his heels. He's got Fulton County, Georgia and Fonnie Willis. He's got Jack Smith and the documents case and the January 6th case. He knows that... that he could potentially be threatened. And he needs to make sure that his followers, and they are followers, these aren't voters anymore. These are, these are people who are willing to follow him to the ends of the earth. He needs them to buy into the idea that anything that happens to him is happening to them. Uh, you it's know, interesting. Money was is always a goal of his, but it certainly wasn't the primary one in this case. Mary, uh, uh, he just issued a statement. He says this is political persecution and election interference at the highest level in history. From the time I came down the golden escalator at Trump Tower, and even before I was sworn in as your president of the United States, the radical left Democrats, the enemy of the hardworking men and women of this country have been engaged in a witch hunt to destroy the Make America Great Again movement. You remember it just like I do. Russia, 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 the Mueller hoax. Ukraine, 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 Ukraine. Impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax two, the illegal and unconstitutional 
Mar-a-Lago raid, and now this. The Democrats have lied, cheated, and stolen in their obsession with trying to get Trump, but now they've done the unthinkable, indicting a completely innocent person in an act of blatant election interference. Oh, there's more. Never before in our nation's history has this been done. The Democrats have cheated countless times over the decades, including spying on my campaign, but weaponizing our justice system to punish a political opponent who just so happens to be a president of the United States and by far the leading Republican candidate for president has never happened before, ever. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, who was handpicked and funded by George Soros, is a disgrace. Rather than stopping the unprecedented crime wave taking over New York City, he's doing Joe Biden's dirty work, ignoring the murders and burglaries and assaults he should be focused on. This is how Bragg spends his time. Hold on, is that it? I think that's enough. Yeah, I didn't know whether there was more to his statement. There will be. Okay, here we go. Let me just finish it, Mary, while I'm here. I believe this witch hunt will backfire massively on Joe Biden. The American people realize exactly what the radical left Democrats are doing here. Everyone can see it. So our movement and our party, united and strong, will first defeat Alvin Bragg, and then we will defeat Joe Biden, and we are going to throw every last one of these crooked Democrats out of office so we can, all caps, make America great again. So um, he's obviously not talking about the legal implications of this and trying to use this as a way to trash Democrats and rally and galvanize his base. Yeah, he doesn't have a choice. And that statement is is emblematic of of how he operates. On the one hand, it's really boring. Uh, Secondly, it is just um, going over old territory There are a couple of truths in there. Yes, this is true. Uh, Somebody in his position has never been indicted before. Congratulations, Donald, once again for making history. Um, But it's also full of lies, deceit, projection, and deflection. So, you know, that's that's all he's got. No, we're going to be talking about sort of the specifics of the uh, legalities with Neil Katyal in, in, in about an hour, Mary. But do you want to talk about sort of the the loose edges of this case? This predates uh, your uncle's presidency, and it's all about basically paying hush money to Stormy Daniels during the election, pre you know before the election, mm-hmm. so she wouldn't uh, ruin his chances. Michael Cohen went to prison for this, and now uh, this is really what the charges are about. I heard some commentators on television wondering if some of the New York's New York state investigations might be wrapped up in, in this as well. But do you want to talk about sort of the broad strokes of what he is accused of doing and why it's a felony? Yeah. And I can't wait to hear what Neil said. I, I'm not, I'm not an attorney. So um, anything I'm saying is just based on information I've gotten from, from better sources. But I do think that is, uh, there are a couple of things. First of all, there has been a lot of talk, in the, especially the last couple of weeks after Donald lied about his imminent arrest, uh, that it's bad if this case produces indictments before the other more serious cases, as if somehow that would taint the other cases or undermine the seriousness, seriousness of them. And that's, that is patently false. We're talking about a case that often gets, it's not, not misrepresentation to say that it's about hush money. But that is not the most important thing it's about. It is about election fraud. It is about deceiving the American people. So when they went to vote in November of 2016, they did not have all of the facts at their disposal. They did not know. I mean, they knew a lot about his hideous behavior. But I think this might have landed differently with a lot of people. We're talking about a man who paid off a woman with whom he slept while his wife, who had just had their baby, was in the same place. I mean, it's it's just not what um, a lot of people would have been comfortable with, I think. And we can't, you know, the other reason I think this is important is because, you know, there may, there there are times when somebody with the power and influence and wealth of Donald Trump 
will just skate on these lower level charges because of their position in society. So even though it is not the biggest, most serious case, I am absolutely thrilled that finally at long last, something is being done to show the country and the world that he cannot keep getting away with it. You know, when he was calling for people to protest, um, you know, I don't think there was a specific time. Are you worried about his followers and his fans, you know, not necessarily replicating what happened? By the way, I'm talking to Mary Trump, everyone, about the indictment of her uncle, Donald Trump, a historic indictment of a pres former president of the United States. But do you, are you concerned about violence or him calling for his, uh, you know, for, for his followers to uh, protest in the street? It seems like those calls, I wouldn't say fell on deaf ears, but mm -hmm. they didn't seem to really galvanize his, his followers. Yeah, yeah I, Katie, I'm very worried about it, but I don't think it will take the form of huge protests in the street. One, because as we saw in New York, Law enforcement is taking these threats very seriously. Uh, they were ready. Uh, two, um, I, I think that this case doesn't have, it's very difficult to make this about American democracy. <laughs> you know, this is a very individual case. This is, you can't pretend that because he's not getting away with having paid money off to a woman he had an affair with, that that's going to affect the future of American democracy. What worries me, what really concerns me is Donald's willingness to engage in stochastic terrorism, to incite his followers individually to go out and attack the FBI or the DA. We saw him do this last week. He said he used racist and anti-Semitic terms to get people riled up about Alvin Bragg and lo and behold, an envelope full of white powder, which thankfully was was not anthrax, uh, was sent to Alvin Bragg's office. The FBI has to invest has been investigating this. That is what he's going to keep pushing. We saw that he was allowed to go to Waco, Texas, and engage in the most insane, apocalyptic, anti-government language that he has used to date. We need to be taking this really, really seriously. You know him better than anyone, I think, in terms of his psychological makeup, because you've known him, you've observed him, you have written about him. Um, and I'm just curious, uh, you know, by the way, Charlie Savage at the New York Times just wrote or tweeted, as a flood of commentary assessing the weight and merits of the indictment fills cable TV and social media, it's important to stress that we have not seen the charges. And that is a very important caveat. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, Maggie Haberman is reporting a large group of former Trump Organization employees is sending texts quietly cheering the latest developments, a reminder of how many people have felt burned in various ways by Trump over the years, which is a, a fascinating yeah. observation and perhaps not all that surprising given that many of these people formerly associated with the Trump organization were not paid, or as you mentioned, were stiffed and yep. uh, not treated particularly well. But the question I was getting to, Mary, is knowing uh, Donald Trump the way you know him, what do you think his genuine reaction is to learning the news of this indictment behind the bravado of some of his statements and perhaps some of the things that he's putting out on social media? I think he's experiencing something he's never experienced before. I, I, I'm sure, or I'm fairly sure, that he's having a very difficult time processing this information because he's always gotten away with it. Like, I, up until now, I bet it never occurred to him that this day would come. And <coughs> it probably is putting, uh, now, Donald operates out of fear almost all of the time. Uh, that's what the bravado is about. That's what the bullying is about. Um, that's, that's just, you know, that's what he, he is feeling unconsciously all the time. That's been kicked up to a whole new level because this could potentially open the floodgates 
And even though he doesn't want to hear it, there have to be people around him, presumably his lawyers, telling him that he needs to start bracing himself because this will not be, or these will not, we don't, I don't even know if we know how many indictments there are going to be out of New York. These will not be the only ones. Yeah, well, we, of course, we've got the Georgia investigation that has not been wrapped up yet. Right. Uh, pretty serious charges there. We have the Justice Department investigation <clears throat> about the classified documents and also inciting that riot on January 6th. So there's a lot to be learned. And I understand that the charges won't be unsealed until the arraignment. So there's going to be an awful lot of speculation between now and then. And I guess, yeah. I, I don't know how he turns himself in, if he can do that in Mar-a-Lago. Have you heard about that, how he voluntarily uh, turns himself in to, to officials? Uh, yeah, from what I understand, uh, he and his Secret Service detail have to show up in New York and be processed at that facility in, in New York City. Um, you know, they're not gonna come to him unless he refuses which I think is incredibly unlikely. We've seen this before. When necessary, Donald can be very pragmatic. He claimed falsely that he won the 2020 election. He incited an insurrection over that. And yet he still voluntarily left the White House on January 20th because in addition uh, to many other things, he's also a coward. He is not going to force that kind of confrontation. Someone from the, Shane Goldmacher from the New York Times says the timing of Trump's indictment coincides with the end of quarter fundraising rush. Republicans expect the news to boost the Trump campaign's financial bottom line yeah. uh, during what would already be one of the busiest times for on loan, online donations. Fascinating. Yeah, and, and that's, uh, we've seen that and we, this is, this is the Republican Party now. This is the party of grievance. And Donald is expert at ramping up people's feelings of having been aggrieved. And he is, he is sort of the stand-in for that now. Like, he is them, they are him. And he's going to make it all about that, uh, the injustice. And he's going to do his level best to make himself the symbol of uh, America. Uh, and... and that's that's where things get kind of and i wanted to mention that that uh white house officials are not commenting on the indictment they're trying to keep uh the investigation at arm's length so a lot to be determined we don't know as we mentioned what the actual charges are we will not expect to know them until donald trump is arraigned but um, it feels like the walls are closing in on the former president. Uh, <clears throat> and this is not the first, I mean, this is the first, but not the last uh, wall that, that may in fact close in on the former president. So it's going to be a very interesting time to say the least. Uh, yep. And a lot of circuses that we'll be watching in the in the days and weeks to come. Mary, always great to see you. Thank you for hopping on. Thanks so much, Katie. It was great to see you. Okay, take care. Bye, Bye everyone. Too.